Hey everyone! In today's video, I will show you another powerful exercise to help you improvise over a set of chord changes with grace and ease. This one is really important and it builds directly on what I showed you in the first video of this series. And I will leave an annotation to that video up on the screen somewhere. Please be sure to check it out first before watching this one. Because the exercise in this video builds directly on what I teach you guys in the first video. But before we dive in very quickly, for those of you who asked about lessons, you can reach me at Ruslan Piano on Instagram or at facebook.com slash Ruslan Music. Or you can leave a comment down below and I'll reach out to you myself. So like I said, today we will learn a powerful new exercise or a set of exercises to help you improvise over chord changes. To do this exercise, you will already have to know what chord scales go with what chords. Once you have control over chord scales and you know which scale goes with which chord, it is then time to explore what might reside within the chord scales. I don't know if you know, but inside every scale you can find endless intervallic shapes, arpeggios, patterns and all other kinds of devices to help you describe the color of the scale without having to play the scale. These devices are endless and endless more can be invented. But some very few of these devices are critically important for every improviser to check out. One of these critically important devices is the arpeggios that live within every scale. That's right, inside every scale there are arpeggios that are diatonic to that scale. Diatonic to the scale simply means confined to the notes of the scale. So what do I mean by that? If a scale has seven notes, then we can build a diatonic arpeggio on every one of these notes. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Here's an F major scale. And here are the arpeggios that can be built on every one of the notes in that scale. Notice how every first note of the ascending arpeggios is a note from the F major scale. Also notice how all the other notes in the arpeggio are also diatonic to the F major scale and are confined to its notes. For example, you see the note B flat appearing several times in these arpeggios. Why is it not B natural? Well, it's not B natural because the arpeggios are confined to the F major scale and there is no B natural in the F major scale. There's only B flat. And this is what I mean that the arpeggios are bound to the notes of the scale. And this is why they're relevant for improvising. The arpeggios help us describe the flavor and the color of the scale without us ever having to actually play the scale. If you want to improvise on F major, you will find this very, very useful. Let's pick a set of chord changes to work with so I could show you how this really works in real life and how you should be practicing over your own sets of chord changes you want to improvise over. Here's our set of chord changes. What are the chord scales for the chords? Here they are. Those are the chord scales for these chords. Let us now map out the arpeggios that reside within each one of these chord scales. And how do we do that? Simple. We take every note inside every chord scale and we build a diatonic arpeggio on top of that note.
Sometimes the chords will have to be twice as long or twice as short just for us to be able to finish all the arpeggios. That's fine, as long as we cover all of them. Okay, that's the first step of the exercise. Be able to play all of the diatonic arpeggios in all of the chord scales corresponding to the chords you want to improvise over. In the same way I just did in my example. Now that you're finished with that, let's take those same arpeggios and change the direction of the notes. Let's try to practice that for a second. Something like this. Okay, great. This is giving us more and more tools to improvise over these chords. Couple more permutations, why not? How about alternating the two? Whereas the first arpeggio goes up and the second goes down. And then the third goes up and then the fourth goes down. And so on and so forth. Something like this. Couple more? Why not? How about breaking up the notes? The arpeggio has four notes in it. How about instead of doing the first, second, third, and fourth note, we do first, third, second, and fourth, right? Like this. Now, how about we change the order of the notes, like this. And while we're at it, how about alternating the two, like this. Why is this good, you guys? Again, all you're doing here is you're playing the right chord scales over the chords, but you're doing it in ways far more creative than just playing the scale up and down. And you will for sure need those ways to help you express yourself freely over these chord changes. These are just arpeggios. There are countless more devices you could use to improvise over chord changes, literally countless. And the more of them you have under your belt, the more free you're gonna feel improvising over these chords. There are patterns and intervallic shapes and linear exercises and so many things. And all of them will help you get deeper and deeper into these chords so that when you improvise over them, you can really express yourself and not feel stifled and stuck trying to play the right notes. By being strictly confined to the notes of the scale, all of these devices help us paint the scale in a myriad of different ways to the listener's ear without ever having to play the scale explicitly. And that's why these devices are so helpful. Imagine being able to describe a topic in 20 different ways. Well, 
This is exactly what these arpeggios and shapes help us do with the chord scale. They help us describe the color and flavor of the scale in different ways without ever having to play the scale itself explicitly. That's about it, you guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up down below. Let me know if you have any questions or concerns. I respond to every single person and coach you guys one-on-one -on, -one on how to practice the material in these videos in the best, most effective ways. Let me know if you have any questions or requests and I will personally answer you in the comments. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to the channel. I make a lot of these kinds of videos and teach you guys bread and butter material on how to get better and grow your musicality right here and right now. If you're already a subscriber, please hit that notification button down below so that when I make more of these videos, you'll be the first one to know about them. Thank you for checking out my channel and I will see you in the next video. Peace.